Hey guys, it's Scott with Scotty B Cards. In this video, I am taking your hot takes and giving my opinion. Okay, so on my Instagram, I asked everybody, what are your sports card hot takes? What things about the hobby do you have an opinion on that may be different than everybody else? And I have a lot of answers. I'm gonna make this a series, but this is the first installment of that series. Before we start, if you're a sports card, trading card, baseball card fan, then this is the channel for you. We post two to three times each and every week exclusively about this content. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything. All right, so our first hot take, SGC 9.5 should be on par with PSA 10s. So that is a hot take, but I personally disagree. Reason being is because a PSA 10 is the very top of the scale. It's considered their gem mint. SGC 9.5 is considered a mint plus. They have a gem mint grade, which is their SGC 10. So you should consider an SGC 10 and a PSA 10 the same grade technically. Also, there's the gold label for SGC, which probably is more comparable to a PSA 10. I know SGC 10 still lag behind a PSA 10. So regardless, SGC 9.5 isn't technically the right grade. For BGS, a BGS 9.5 is considered their gem mint grade and a BGS 10 is so hard to get that that historically was a fair comp, but now it's not the case whatsoever. Upper Deck should have gotten MLB exclusivity over tops back in 2010. I don't like that, <laughs> but I understand why you could feel that way. If you look back historically, Upper Deck in the late 80s, early 90s, they were really popular. That's why the Ken Griffey's so big, a couple other rookies, their best rookie card is an Upper Deck, not in top products. And Upper Deck in the 2000s did a lot of innovative stuff and they did some really cool products. But overall, they were kind of a relatively not well-ran company at the time. It's when Topps got it, plus MLB sided with history over Upper Deck. You know, it wasn't as flashy as it was in the 90s. So overall, I don't think Upper Deck should have gotten it. I still don't think Fanatic should have gotten it. We're seeing how mad everybody is that Tops didn't get the exclusive license heading forward and now Fanatics has it and everybody's upset. But if you look at basketball and football, not many people really care that Panini lost their license. So it shows baseball card collectors like Tops and they like sticking to that brand. So I think how it ended up is a good thing. Tops Heritage Baseball Color, Chromes, Purples, etc. are undervalued. Yes, I agree with you 100%. Reason being is because a lot of products, let's look at Tops Chrome, for example, or even Tops Flagship, they keep introducing new parallels each and every year. And in Tops Heritage this last year, they introduced, I think, two more parallels at least. But regardless, there's not many. There's the Chrome out of 999, the Refractor out of like 572, and the Purple Hot Box parallel. Now we have a red, which I think was the 372 this year, and a blue speckle refractor, but that's five. There's also an action variation, which I would include in here, and you have some other errors. But if we're looking just at the chromes, then I actually agree. They are very undervalued, and I don't understand how Topps Heritage isn't as valued. It's a really historic set. You know, 70 years in the past, they take that set. It kind of blows my mind. Back before the big hobby boom in the early 2010s, Topps Heritage was basically one of the best products. I've heard a lot of people say if Mike Trout would have had a Topps Heritage rookie card, that would have been the card to collect instead of the update rookie card. But because Trout had the update rookie card, not a Heritage rookie, that's kind of what set off the flagship boom from 2011 all the way basically until this year. It's kind of cooling down now as Topps Chrome's picking up, not just the base rookie cards anymore. But overall, agree 100% with this. Acuna is better than Tatis and Soto. This one... Nobody can really answer 100%. Ronald Acuna was having a really good year, a really good year. And so is Fernando Tatis Jr. and Juan Soto. Soto has about 4.9 baseball reference war. Tatis has 5.3 baseball reference war. Acuna has about 3.8, maybe 3.3 before he tore his ACL in July. He'd be around 4.5 to 5 right now as well. It's all too early to tell, but... Acuna has such a high ceiling, and so does Tatis. If you look at war per 162 games played, Fernando Tatis Jr. averages about 8.5 war, which is really, really high. If you look at Mike Trout, I think he's like 10. But if you look at Acuna and Soto, they're both around 5 to 6. So if you look at that, it says Tatis is a more all-around player. But we will not know this answer until 10 years from now, or less. Maybe 5. Maybe 5 years from now, we will not know who is the best player of this trio. I have been banking on Soto myself because I think he'll age well. And injury is less of a worry for me compared to the other two. Look at Acuna. That's exactly why I was worried about it. But I have exposure in all three of them. So I don't have really any reason to pick one or the other. But I think Acuna possibly could end up as the best one out of those three. Time will tell. 
SGC will replace BGS as the number two grading company in one to two years. One to two years is not likely, but there is a realistic path for SGC to pass BGS. I don't think they will myself, but right now SGC is open. They're grading cards in less than a month for $30 a card. That's more than what BGS is doing. BGS has an advantage where their cases are better at protecting the card, better looking, the inner sleeve, subgrades, all these things differentiate them against SGC. So I don't really think they'll ever pass BGS but if SGC can stay open for another year and BGS isn't open for another year for cheap grading again, people are going to keep grading with SGC and people are creatures of, you know, what they see, creatures of habit. They're going to see less new cards and BGS holders and more in SGC holders and that may shift the balance. That might make SGC more desirable in people's eyes than BGS. Do I think it'll happen? No, but is this a hot take that's unrealistic? No, it's a good hot take. Memorabilia cards need a total rework. Current format is oversaturated and a nuisance. This is what I think everybody can get on board with. I know if you open Topps Heritage, maybe 75% of the time, you're gonna get a relic. And that relic is probably worth three to five dollars. It's not worth anything out of a hundred dollar hobby box. If you get an autograph, it's worth some. Even autographs are kind of being devalued by how many are signed nowadays. But overall, memorabilia cards, only way they're worth something is if they're really low numbered or they have a really nasty patch on them. And nasty, I mean like really good looking patch on them. So yes, I think it needs to be reworked. It'd be really nice if they released them so little or only in retail, where they weren't really present in, unless it was a high-end hobby product, really make mem memorabilia cards something to chase. That would be fun again. I remember when I was a kid, Kid. I got an Andre Karolinko rookie jersey card and I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. I got it at a flea market for probably 20 bucks because it was a ripoff, but I didn't care. I was like eight years old and I thought it was the coolest thing ever. Now, if I get a jersey card, even if it's Mike Trout, it's worth $10, you know, 20 bucks at most out of Heritage, for example, or Topps Update or whatever it is. And so it does need to change. I agree. I think rookie patch autographs are the best value in modern baseball. So let's talk rookie patch autographs. This is a hot take because there's not many products that have them. You have Dynasty, you have Luminance, you have the really high-end stuff that have the true rookie patch autographs. The only other product I can really think of that has a traditional rookie patch autograph is Inception. There are other products out there like National Treasures Immaculate that carry them from Panini. But overall, I think that they need to have more value. If you look at basketball, all those cards are worth so much that are National Treasures. And I'm not saying National Treasures in baseball should be worth more, but there's there's no reason that luminaries shouldn't be worth more. There's no reason that dynasty shouldn't be worth more. And we're seeing this trend up even with national treasures in baseball where that's happening. So I agree. I don't know if they're the best value. I think there's good value in tops Chrome autographs. I think there's great value in tops update Chrome refractors. If the player doesn't have many rookies like Juan Soto, but overall I like that take. So anyways, guys, let me know in the comments below if you like this type of video. If you do, I can make more in the future. Let me know if there's any of the hot takes you disagree with. If you have your own hot takes, leave them down below and you may see it in future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next episode. See you guys. This is my new channel, AMSR. I'll just smack my lips. <laughs> okay, I'll stop. I'm sorry.